Hello everybody, my name is Jimmy and welcome back to Jimmy Does Knitting. I am a knitter and knitwear designer here in Amsterdam and I have a podcast where I share a bunch of stuff. I am Jimmy Does Knitting on Ravelry and Instagram and you can look at more of my YouTube videos and tutorials here. Thank you for coming along and listening to me ramble. Uh, we usually get right right into it but I have a little bit of admin to discuss. Um, I unexpectedly finished my projects <laughs> really fast and so I lost all control and I cast on four sweaters. So instead of talking about four sweaters for the next three months, we're going to divvy it up a little bit in this episode. We'll discuss what I finished and then two of the sweaters which are designs and then we'll get into the other two later on. I do have an incoming deadline in it that I don't know what I can and cannot say. Uh, so I that's going to take priority and it may or may not be able to be shown, probably not. So what I'm going to do is just like break it up and we'll have like sort of like regular podcast episodes and we'll we'll shift the sweaters and then we'll have a couple of special like I made this episodes, uh, something I'm trying out so we can see. And then, um, yeah, so we're playing with things. We're playing with the format. Usually I pick a topic and then I just go for it. The, today's topic was going to be I panic cast on four sweaters, but I think it's actually going to be more of a regular episode and that's not something I usually do, but kind of always do. So um, yeah, welcome along for the ride. Let's get into the knitting and let's talk about my first knitted object, which I'm wearing. This is the Lanark sweater by the Crea Bea and I really like this. I bought some really cheap yarn, Drops Daisy, which we'll discuss later, and I just knit this up. I think I spent like two weeks on this and it took forever to dry because nothing dries in Amsterdam. It's cold, it's not sunny, like I, I've got nothing. So it took maybe a week to dry because this is a half fisherman's rib. It's this all over texture and I've just been craving some like deep rib. Um, yeah, and I'm really happy with this. And it, I mean, I still, I did it like two, two and a half weeks. The, the zipper was a new thing for me to install, but I think we got there. I sort of overworked it. And if you look at the inside of this, I really messed up, but we're not going to look at the inside of this garment and we're just going to admire it for what it is. So this is a top down, it's like a drop shoulder all over half fisherman's rib, which is like pseudo brioche, pseudo rib, like if they had a baby. And then it has this like collar and then this zipper that goes down. So I wanted to try this for a couple of reasons. One, I just, we go to this coffee shop every morning. I talk about it a lot and people there just dress cool. And I've just been craving some like brioche or like a deep rib. And this was, this was it. Um, also, I wanted to try out something new and I always have a cold neck. So I was like, okay, let's try out this because I can get the brioche and then I can also have this like color thing. It's like not stylish whatsoever and like not fashionable, but like I've been really enjoying the fact that not only is it a deep rib, but it has the collar. But I didn't know if I would like this or not. So I didn't invest much into the yarn. So we bought Drops Daisy on sale. And I think I bought like 17 balls of this. And I use like 12 because I, I just don't use as much yarn as other people. So I have a lot left over. These are 100% um, merino wool, non-superwash. It's their new yarn base. It is a DK weight. Um, yeah, just wool made in Peru. This is the color three, it's black. And I mean, it's a fine yarn to work with and it was really affordable. So I think I spent 44 euros on 17 balls of this yarn. And yeah, so it wasn't a big investment in time or money. And I do actually plan on re-knitting this in like a sturdier yarn once this wears out, which I don't think will take very long. So, um, I just want to show you this thing is already pilling and I would say I don't know if you can see that there's a lot of wear like under the underarm here It's unclear if you can see that or not 
but I um, it just is not wearing well. I, I've probably worn it softly like three days ish for like half a day and like not doing really any activity or moving a whole lot and it's already starting to pill and also the yarn just feels like very light and that's not bad it's super soft but like it's also I don't know I just think for this I need like a hardier yarn you know I want like a if we're going to talk like fisherman sweaters I want something that has like uh, to it you know I'm not superwash merino like delicate fine thing I'd love like a woolen spun like nice not necessarily rustic but like I don't know different sheep breeds or or something like that so I mean this is exactly the sweater that I intended to make with this yarn and I'm glad that I did it this way I didn't realize that I would like it so much so I don't know there's another one in my future of these for sure but yeah, I'd highly recommend it. I would say for the men's fitting, the, I mean, the armpit depth could be a little deeper. Um, I'd probably make it like a half inch, inch deeper, like one or two centimeters. Just, I mean, like it fits me okay, but I'm not like a big guy. So that's just something to be aware of with this pattern. But overall, I really like it. I just did... Um, a sewn bind off. I didn't even do the tubular setup. I think that that looks quite nice on the edges. And yeah, I would also say that this yarn grew vertically more than I expected. So I know with the stitch that the front and the back look slightly different and that when people switch from in the round to flat that they sometimes like the stitch changes and swaps on them. So I did an actual swatch to see if that's the case. My stitch looks the same knitting flat or in the round. So I was not so worried about that. And I knew because of the nature of the stitch that it would just go once you blocked it, which it did. And <laughs> to be honest, I was like, Ooh, you know, is this going to be like a huge thing? Um, it did grow a little bit more vertically because I think the yarn is like kind of drapey in a way. Um, I think it's the yarn. It did grow horizontally as well, which I went down a size when I knit because I knew that this would would fluff up and that I'm a looser knitter. I was always a tight knitter, but I'm really discovering that I'm like loosey-goosey over here now, which is really weird and it's changing how I approach projects and, and go for projects and stuff like that and how I'm doing sizing, but that's, that's my own thing. But yeah, um, yeah, I, I don't know what else to say. It's pretty, it's a nice pattern. It had, it was really like, um, I wouldn't say challenging, but like the yoke was involved in a way that I really liked. It like itched my brain in a nice way. It's a different type of construction than I've, always, than I've ever done, um, especially with like the folding collar and how you cast on and stuff. I thought it was really nice. I really liked it. And um, then it was just like this really rhythmic knit. And then I just, yeah, I knit the size two, the 37 inch, and I just knit the sleeves a little bit longer, the body a little bit longer, called it a day. So I didn't really change, I didn't change anything in the pattern aside from the length. Um, but as I said, I would, I would change the arm to arm depth a little bit. Yeah, so that is my Lanark sweater. I'm gonna go down there and get the next thing. So the next one was part of my stash busting efforts. Uh, I, for some reason, think like an easy shawl scarf was something that I needed. And I had these two cones that I was itching to do something with. So I used this whole super soft, it's in their acre color. I also had a little bit of a ball of whole super soft in bleached which honestly looks exactly the same and you cannot tell. This is Woolly Knit, the British four ply in the color Zest. And then I used some West Wool Bicycle in the color Copenhagen. It's their black. And I had some from like when I first started knitting and they've changed the formula of the, the yarn. So the yarn in the fingering weight acts a little bit different 
um, before it was like, I guess, very specific sheep. And then it had um, Tessel sheep, which is just a breed from the north of the Netherlands. They have some islands over there and it's an interesting place. But then they changed it to more like mass produced Merino and they made it like a little fluffier, I think. So anyway, I couldn't combine that with other West wool that they have currently. So I just decided to use a little bit of that. And I think I used maybe like 25 grams of it. And I made this. Ugh. I made the Frost Bangs by Les Garcons. So this was their advent calendar one. And it was meant to use a bunch of mini skeins and then two main colors. But I chose to just do everything the same and make it into three colors. So let's unravel this and see what's going on. So it is just over and over again, these triangles in this pattern. And it was a really easy knit. It was modular. So you're only working on one of these triangles at a time. So you didn't really need like huge needles. And it was, it was quite nice. Oh, I picked up my mic over here. Um, but yeah, so I really enjoyed making this. It was like a no brainer. And then it was like done before I even knew it. And I just chose to keep it pretty simple and just use the yarn. This is like incredibly soft in a way that I have not had holes to be soft as I normally do. I'm crumpling it all up. But I, I, I like want to squoosh this on my face and my body and everything because it's just, it feels so nice. And what I do with Holst, which I think is really important, is I, well, for one, I added vinegar. So when I block this, the blocking is where the magic comes in with this yarn that really is going to make it shine. So I blocked it and I put some vinegar in because I know for a fact that this yellow runs and then a black is going to run. And they're both right next to this natural A crew color. So vinegar sort of like makes it so colors don't bleed. I'm not sure the science around it, but it works. So I put some white vinegar in and then a ton of dish soap. And I know people are like, oh my gosh, dish soap, what are you doing? But because the Holst has so much lanolin, which is like spinning oil on it and stuff, or like grease, let's say, the dish soap just like powers through that stuff. So I did very cold water because I didn't want the colors to run. I had the vinegar, I had the dish soap in, and we left it there for like, I don't know, 40 minutes or something like that. And then did a little bit of a, a rinse to make sure all the soap was out. It's not like the eucalyn where it just kind of like evaporates. And then we had this, I'm so happy with this. This is the wrong side, hold on. Um, I'm so happy with this. I think it's really nice. And if you can look, so the, the colored sections are stuck in that. And then the other part is garter. And this would be a great stash buster, um, which is exactly what I used it for. Although I just used three colors instead of, you know, if you have a ton of little minis and like a cone of yarn, I think that that would also be good. So yeah. Um, and the reason why I'm saying this is because I have had so many fingering weight projects on my needles this year and at the end of last year. It's like very uncharacteristic of me. And I was like, I just need to clear them off and then start doing other <laughs> size needles, basically. Um, I've never really been a fingering weight yarn type of guy. Um, mostly because I like garments and texture and warmth and fingering weight it takes a long time with garments, which, oof. and then, um, you know, it's, it's a fairly light fabric. So it's not something that I really go to a whole lot. And TBD, if I still want to make a bunch of fingering weight stuff, which I mean, I'm going to make some fingering weight stuff, but like, I don't know how it's going to be. I live in the Netherlands. It's sweater weather all year round. In general, you're not going to see like summer knitting plans, spring stuff from here. You know, it's just not, it's it's not gonna happen. We're gonna knit sweaters all year round. We're gonna do, I don't know, probably accessories, but I just like knitting sweaters and I'm cold all the time. So they, I mean, that's kind of what you're gonna get. I mean, obviously you're gonna get other stuff, but not a whole lot. Um, 
So I was like, I need to finish my finger weight projects. I think I had like three or four on at one point on my needles for like a month and I, I needed to get it off. It was hurting my hands just being doing the same thing all the time. And this was the last one. And then I could start one more sweaters quantity of stash busting that I was have been talking about for forever. So let's get into that one. That one starts with this yarn. If you've been looking at the channel for a while, you've, you've heard me talk about this. I got this at a yarn festival. It is a merino with some tweedy bits in it. It's really nice. It's a really cool yarn. It's from the Dradkracht and I got it at Breidache. And I, I, th I thought this was just beautiful. What I will say as I'm working with this is it's definitely super washed. I would say it's like heavily processed superwash and the appeal of this was that it was like a natural color and then it was all like natural materials and stuff and you know they had some samples but it was like busy and whatever and I think all of their yarn is superwash which I'm not the biggest fan of and that's not really what I was going for but here we are we have a sweaters quantity of this fingering weight yarn it's a beautiful yarn and it's so much fun to knit and will I buy it again I I don't know, simply because of the superwash, but I know that they have like a really cool variety of undyed yarns, but I think that they're all superwashed. So I don't know, I don't know. They're labeling, it's like a mom and pop business. Their labeling didn't indicate superwash. I also had a BFL that I bought for them that I used that was turned out to be superwash. Um, it's fine, I guess. I. I don't know how I feel about that. I probably won't be going back and getting some of their stuff anytime soon. Anyway, I have started a new design with this yarn. It is a bottom up sweater and it's just like a little, like this is the pattern that came to mind when I started this thing. It's going to be a drop shoulder. So bottom up, um, split for front and back, knit the collar, some sort of shoulder joint and go down. I'm going to be honest, I don't know exactly what I want to do after the split. I could make it like a modified drop shoulder. I could make it like a like a bigger drop shoulder. I could do slope shoulders. I could do a three needle bind off. I'm not really quite sure what I'm feeling, but I mean, it's fingering weight. So we have a lot to discuss. <laughs> we have a lot to knit before we even get there. I did something, I did a cabled cast on, which is not my favorite cast on. And I put a tutorial about how to do that. Um, it's fine. I just like a tubular cast on. I think it's just more beautiful for some reason. And, but the reason why I did a cable cast on is because of the ribbing. So the pattern is like a certain repeat and I modified it a little bit because of the fingering weight. So this is the pattern. It's hard to show up on here, but it's like a, um, like a five by one rib with like a, just a, a garter row every so often. And what I did in order to make it look nice is I did um, a two by one ribbing down here for four inches. And then I, I went into the actual pattern. So, that's, I mean, it looks, I don't know if you can really see this in, on the camera, but like in person, it looks a lot clearer. Like you can see what's going on a little bit, but I like the idea that the ribbing went into the pattern motif and it wasn't so disjointed. I suppose I could have done one by one ribbing, but I like the, the two by one idea a little bit better. And yeah, I mean, this is really not like a priority project. I'll probably take it with me when I go to the UK soon and we'll, I'll just work on it and see what happens. It'd be nice to have this done by, I'm going to Spain in May and I think that this would be a nice thing to take with me, but like, if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. So we'll see. I mean, it's really nice. I enjoy working on it. It's my, I'm not thinking very much project. So it's like in between when I have to wait for Mr. Does Knitting or whatever, I am just kind of doing this. Um, yeah. I don't know what else to say. We'll see how this 
goes, because I don't know how this is going to go. What I think I'm going to do, and I'm gonna try it out with the next sweater first, is I think, because this is a me design, I think I'm just gonna write up one size in like an official pattern, not test it, not grade it, put it up on Ravelry, and almost sell like the recipe of the pattern and then sell it for like a dollar. But that way I can be like creative and like publish patterns and then, I don't know, still get them out there. And then if they take off or something happens, I can always grade them up, test them and put them out. So I, I think that that's going to be my approach to designing. Um, like I said, it's just not worth the time or the money for me to sell my designs at the moment. Like a, just a tech editor, I haven't even gotten like the tech editor fees or even the yarn costs from my previous designs like compensated by pattern sales. Running a test is stressful sometimes um, and dealing with tech editors and I've been grading everything myself. So I, I think I would love to pay for a grader, but I can't afford that if I can't even get the tech editing fees. And grading is a bunch of math and crazy, and I I just don't have the patience or the wherewithal for it. Like, if I would make money from it, yes, but I mean, this is not happening. So, um, all that to say, I will probably publish this, and we'll see how that goes. Um, I think it is important to have menswear out there because the stuff I see is either like women's wear that's marked like a man can also wear this which is true but also I don't know or it's like historic stuff or like drops or I don't know um so as I come up with these things I think I'm just gonna put them out there and see what happens for now uh it really I have to write this up for me to follow anyway in one size and then I can just you know clean it up a little bit take some pictures pop it on it should be good so that's the idea with this I don't have a name for it I'm just calling it like my merino tweed project and so far I'm really enjoying it it's quite a nice knit we have one more to discuss and that is it for this episode so let me get that so for this next one, it's a design that I'm doing that I'm copying-ish, which is also why I'm only gonna sell it for a euro, but I'm gonna make a whole video about my approach to this and how it goes. We'll see how it turns out, but like, this is what's happening. So what I'm doing is, this is a finished sweater. This is a commercial sweater from Koss, and it's my boyfriend's sweater, and it's the perfect boyfriend sweater and I wanted to recreate it. It's just a drop shoulder, it seemed. I'm not gonna talk about this tremendously because I have a whole other video on it, but basically I'm gonna recreate this cloth sweater for myself. And yeah, this is also a little bit too big and it's plastic, but it has this sort of like dense tweediness to it that I really, really, really like in addition to the shape. And it's seamed, so it's cheap to manufacture for cost, but also it's like quite sturdy. And so I like that. So what I did at first was pick a yarn. And Studio Donegal is like the place where I'm getting it. Uh, they're mostly a weaving mill, but they produce their own like yarn and textiles from it. They're based in Ireland and they have a website from like, Windows 98, like 2002. It's not the most sophisticated or like selly thing, but it's really, it, it doesn't matter, but they don't update it with their yarn often, um, but they recently did. So I was like, all right, this is coming in the, the queue so I could do it. So I was looking at their, their tweed at first and last minute I switched to their soft marls. And I had somebody at knit night um, knit with it and I was in love with the yarn they picked a different color and so I was like okay I know I like this this would be perfect for to achieve a similar like texture and feel so I got what I thought was a black yarn but I got this 
This is their Soft Marl. This is shade 9590 and it's brown, um, but it's really nice. It, it's just like, it's a two ply. It's sort of like loosely spun. It's a little thick and thin, but not too much. And it's softer than you would think. It's, I guess, all merino and like the, there's like a brown strip and then, a, I don't know, like a Tweety-ish second ply. Um, on the website, this looked black and maybe back here it kind of does, but it looked black and I was deceived, but that's fine. Uh, my boyfriend will wear this and I think I'm gonna steal it for yin yoga. It seems very nice, but yeah, it's like a, it's like, this is yarn, you know? When I say I need a sturdier yarn for my Lanark, the Studio Donegal, I really think is quite nice. This was, I think, 111 euros for seven skeins, so it was okay. Um, I usually try to keep garment projects around 100 or lower. Um, so I would say that this is like middle range. It wasn't like the super discount, like fast fashion price of this, but it wasn't like, you know, La Bien I'm in, which is beautiful and nice and stuff. I'm not knocking it, but I think this is some intermediate thing. And I don't hear people talking about Studio Donegal enough. And I really enjoy working with this yarn. It's very squishy. So what I have done, I have knit the body. Oops, still some yarn. I knit the body and then I've seamed it together. So I knit the body flat in pieces, bottom up. I've added a collar and yeah, it has this really interesting increase part for the drop shoulder. So it actually goes out a little bit to accentuate the drop, which I've never worked before. Um, I mean, I obviously know how it's going to fit. So yeah, I mean, it's just a, a shirt without sleeves on it. I used this, this is a strand of Brusca, which is by Retrosario Rosa Pumar. It's like a DK-ish. I'd say it's DK, although they say DK worsted. Maybe this would be good for another Lanark. It would be. Anyway, I use that to seam it. Um, the actual yarn, if I'm putting a lot of like tension on it and stuff, it really like rips, but um, that also makes it really good to spit splice. So I don't have any, I mean, I clearly have a bunch of ends at the ends, but when I changed balls in the middle, it doesn't have like I can spit splice it. And because of the, I'm not always a spit splice, Oof, the words, I'm not always a big spit splice fan. And that's because I find that little bit, which is usually like two or three stitches where you rub the yarns together to be slightly thicker. And I think that it shows on a garment and that's not my favorite thing. However, because of like the texture of the yarn and the color and the marl, I'm not mad at it and I honestly can't tell where, like unless I really, really, really look, like where the spit splices are. So we're going with it. Um, I ordered seven skeins. I thought I honestly was gonna make it a little bit smaller to fit me better, but we're going full Mr. Does Knitting size, original size, because I know he'll wear it more than me because I don't wear brown. Um, I do think I'll wear this to yin yoga, but I don't wear brown. Um, so I thought that I was going to be really low on yarn and it's turning out not to be. I should have enough. So I used, for the back panel, I used almost exactly two balls. And then this was like maybe one and a half. It's hard to tell because the way that I do shoulders, I always, especially like bottom up shoulders, I do them at the same time. So I attach another ball of yarn and then I knit back and forth, knit back and forth. That way I don't have to do like one and then the other and like maybe they match, maybe they don't. I know that if I like increase at like three stitches on the shoulder that I get three stitches on the shoulder and it's like it's every other round. And so it's a little bit easier to keep track of. And I have like a sheet that I make with all this stuff. I show, I'll show it in this video. But um, yeah, so I, I mean, it's hard to tell exactly what it is. And then I did a, a folded over collar, just like the original. So it's probably more than I wanted to say about this, but this is the cost sweater. And then this will be finished next time. 
I will have a video come out with this with the written pattern in April or May. Um, and I will show you this next time and then the other two sweaters <laughs> that I cast on, which was one stash busty and one was something I'd been eyeing for a while with a really special yarn. So that is what's happening. Um, just so you know, I like batch these episodes and then like edit a bunch and then like put them out. So these are not in a, they're in like a logical order on my YouTube channel, but like I, not necessarily for me. So like I've stopped numbering my episodes because I don't know if it's going to come out in like three weeks or one week or, you know, maybe I shift some stuff around, especially with the amount of time that I have recently because I am still unemployed. I have really been having a lot more content and like things to, to juggle, I guess. So I will see with YouTube. Um, also Instagram, I, I not that anybody like religiously follows me because I don't really have that many followers, but like I think that I'm I need to step away from it a little bit. I don't find Instagram as fun. Like here, I love talking about knitting and showing you my knitting and talking about yarns and patterns and ideas and design. Like that's really what gets me. But like a picture or like having to make a reel of stuff is just like not my jam. It's not as exciting. So I think I need to back off Instagram a little bit. I, I think Instagram needs to chill out and take a break. I'll post when I have something, but like as a regular update, I, I just don't see it happening. I, we really need to like pause. Other than that, uh, I think that's all the knitting chat. The only thing that I wanted to address because I don't have much going on in my life, but I do have a couple things. So knit night, I've been struggling with going and doing it. Like it's, I have to go through the city center, which is a pain because you always hit a tourist with your bike, like without a doubt. Um, and it's just like, I don't know. It's like four or five people that show up now. It's not a big thing. And then they're also, I don't see myself being friends with any of them. I mean, they're nice and we have really nice conversations, but I don't, I don't know about knit night anymore. Like here in Amsterdam, the scene's not great. Um, there was a new event, which I, I think it's called like the Amsterdam Crochet Club or something that was last weekend, which I missed. But I mean, it looked like it was just girls in their 20s learning how to crochet, which is also not it. And then there's another thing called Knits and Notes, which is very nice, which I would go to every once in a while. But um, they they have things like once or twice a month. It's not like a regular knit night. So I don't know. I'm struggling with like finding knitting community and I obsessively want to talk about knitting. So it's coming out on YouTube at the moment, but I in real life would like a little bit more. I don't know. Do any of you struggle with your knit nights or going to knit nights or something else? I don't know. Um, one other thing I wanted to say is that I'm changing things up because I am bored. <laughs> I am bored and I need to like force change in my life. So one is these like revamp of how I do videos and, and different things, but also yoga, which is like the only other thing that I do in my life. I, the yoga studio that I really liked closed down and they closed down in July, like very suddenly. And I had a strong Mysore practice. So I waited a few months and kind of like did my sore in the park regularly and then I joined a yoga studio that sort of like came out of the closed yoga studio and I really like that yoga studio but it is so far away I have to like if it's raining and I take the tram it's like I don't know three euros each way on the tram and it takes I have to leave like 45 minutes before class if I bike it's still I have to leave 30 minutes before class to get there on time and I just, it's taking up a lot of, I, like I'm not going as much because it's just too far away, essentially. I think the teachers are great, the studio's great. It's just not working for me in terms of like motivation. I need something a little bit easier. And I joined specifically to do Mysore, but I haven't been going to Mysore because I don't want to get up and 
bike at like six o'clock in the morning to get somewhere at like 6.30 to like work out. It's just not something that's jiving with me. So I, I've canceled that and I think I'm going to try like a, a weekday membership at a yoga studio that's closer. It doesn't have my floor. It's not really the type of yoga I want to do, but I think at least I'll be able to go like five days a week and then I can do some other stuff. So that's like a really big deal for me of like changing a yoga studio and not doing Mysore, which kind of hurts me. I think it's been two years and I really loved it, but like I just, there are no studios or teachers nearby in a way and I've just stopped doing it because of the inconvenience of it. So I don't know. I just kind of wanted to say that and see, uh, we're going to see what happens with my yoga practice and how it evolves and, and certain things. And same thing with the, the knitting videos. We're, we're going to try to make different types of content or something. We're bringing it, kids. We're just fully bringing it. Um, that being said, it's quite sunny out and I, I think I'm going to bike to yoga soon. So I will see you later. Everybody be kind to yourselves. First and foremost, be kind to yourselves and then be kind to others. Don't be a dick. <laughs> and I will talk to you guys later. Bye.